All right, so now um, that's part one, I'm done. What do I do with part two? Well, you can see it's this proof by mathematical induction that's required. And I'm just gonna rehearse this for you because it's not too complicated. In fact, I would say this is gonna be algebraically simpler than almost any other proof by induction you would do in extension one or extension two. Um, let's have a go at it together. You guys know three basic steps in every proof by induction, right? Test, assume, prove. So let's start out with a test of the base case. And the base case in this case, uh, the base case in this case, you can see is defined there. N is greater than or equal to one. So I'm just gonna say test for N equals one. Um, that statement, right? All the X's are independent of that N. So they all just stay in place, right? The statement will tell us that the number of ways is going to be equal to x outside of x minus one, this x squared minus three x plus three, which we got from part one is still there. And now I substitute in n equals one. So it's one take away one, that's it. Uh, you can see, remember this is a proof, so I'm not gonna skip anything. I've still got x squared minus three x plus three, but it's been raised to the power of zero, which is just equal to one. And that is the x times x minus one that they told us not to prove for choosing the colors of the first column. So I can just say, therefore, it's true for the base case n equals one. Happy times. Okay, uh, what are we then going to assume? Well, we're gonna assume that the statement is true for that arbitrary choice of n, and we're gonna assign that the letter k as is customary. So let's assume that there are x times x minus one, x squared minus three x plus three to the power of, and now I'm gonna substitute in my arbitrary pronoun rule, k minus one, ways to color or to paint. Uh, and what is the size of this grid? We're substituting in k for n. So I'm gonna to say to paint a two by k grid, full stop. There's my assumption. Okay, now what do I have to prove? I need to prove um, something very similar to what I had in my assume step, but for the k plus one um, case, right? So that k minus one index is gonna be replaced by k plus one minus one, so just a k. And then instead of being thinking about a two by k grid, I'm gonna think about a two by k plus one grid. So let's just make the adjustments that we need to there. So you can see that's gonna drop off there. And then over here, instead of a K wide grid, I've got a K plus one wide grid. How do I do it? Okay, now, blink and you'll miss it, right? You really just have to use the assumption and combine it with part two, or part run, one rather, because we're in part two right now. So the way I'm gonna use the assumption is I'm just gonna say, consider the first N columns, or the first K columns rather. The first K columns are their own two by K grid, which I can just use the assumption for, right? Um, consider the first K columns. Um, there are, and I'm just gonna grab this expression up above. There are this many ways to color it or to paint it. Um, and I just, what's my reasoning for that? Like always, I can say by the inductive hypothesis or I can just say by assumption. And um, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna take the second option because it's just shorter to write and shorter to say. So that's that part. And now I just have to worry about the K plus one -th column, right? Like I've covered the first K columns, now I just need to deal with the last one. So the K plus one -th column, how many ways can it be colored? And I'm very simply going to rely on part one, which didn't talk about like all the independent, like it didn't, didn't matter how many columns we had previously. We just had to think about what was the, the one previous to that, right? Because everything else is not adjacent, so you don't need to worry about it, right? So the K plus one column can be painted in how many ways? In, uh, it's this part right here, right? X squared minus three X plus three ways and my justification for that, my substantiation for this claim is part one, proved. Right, so therefore I can now just combine them together by multiplication. I told you there was not much algebraic that you, that you need to worry about. The total number of ways is gonna be equal to, don't skip anything, the number of ways to do the first K columns, there it is, and then I'm going to multiply by the number of ways to do the final column which is right here, but I better chuck some brackets around that, whoops, 
for good measure. Okay, so therefore I can say, well, I'm just gonna put this together with my index laws. I've got x minus one and x out the front, and then x squared minus three x, oopsie daisy, not a k, to the power of k as required. I told you it was straightforward, right? Um, but it is much more intimidating than it looks because you've got all this language to try and um, sift through. Uh, but this, you can see why, where, for those of you, when I got into your breakouts, I said, you know what, don't, don't worry too much about part two. They were pretty easy to marks and there's nothing um, dramatic here. I was just proving it for you here. Um, and of course, I'm gonna conclude. I was just proving it for you here for the sake of completeness, okay? So it's true by the principle of mathematical induction. And I always like to include the domain in my final little conclusion here, for n is greater than or equal to one, full stop. In how many ways can a two by five grid be painted if three colors are available? Pause. Let's just have a look at that part of the question before we deal with this other bit which we said was different because this part of the question, the first half, I can just answer in a very straightforward way um, using parts one and two, right? Uh, not even part one, right? What's the relevant k and what's the relevant x in this question? Because that's all I need to substitute into, right? Well, I think you can see, or you could call it n if you like. Um, in how many ways can a two by five grid be colored? So you can see this here, it stands for um, how wide it is, right? So this is either your n or your k. I mean, those both stand for the same thing, right? Then you've got your number of colors. And so that's going to be, think about it, your only other pronoun you need to deal with here is x. So we already said x has to be bigger than one because you need a couple of colors at least to color this thing and not have adjacent things be equal. So they've set x is equal to three. So all I'm gonna do here for my proof or to, to obtain a number, I should say, um, I'm gonna say from part two, because we proved the result for any arbitrarily wide grid, right? Um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna substitute in that K or that N equals five and the X equals three. Oh, okay, yes, thank you. Thank you for the person who posted in the, in the chat privately that they didn't wanna spoil anything for anyone. I'm totally okay with that as well. Um, okay, from part two, right? The grid or the two by five grid, I should say, can be painted in how many ways? Uh, let me finish writing my sentence here. Okay, let's just go back to that result, right? It was x, x minus one, x squared minus, etc., etc., etc. So I'm going to take all of that with my x equals three and my k equals five or my n equals five. So here we go. Here comes the x, here comes the x minus one, here comes the x squared, take away three lots of x, this is a lot of threes, um, plus three, uh, and then I'm gonna raise it to the power of, this is where the n comes in, right? So, or the k, so this is gonna be five, take away one, okay? So you're like, ugh, gross, there's some messy numbers here, but it's actually not that bad, right? You're gonna get three times two out the front. Um, this three squared and this three times three, they're just gonna cancel with each other, so that's kind of nice. Um, and then you can see uh, I'm gonna get a three raised to the power of four. Oopsie daisy, I don't know why I colored that so. Three to the power of four there, okay? So you got six times three to the power of four, some of you might know is actually 81. And you're like, I don't even need a calculator for this. At least I hope you don't. That's 486 ways. Okay, now, several of you have noticed that this can't be right because I've only taken into account half of the question, right? This is just for a two by five grid with three colors, but this includes not necessarily using all the colors. And that's what this question has explicitly stated it wants. Each color must now be used at least once, right? So think about this. This 486, right, what it includes is well, there's no way to color it with just one color, yeah, because then you'd have adjacent things um, side by side with the same color matching and that's not allowed. But you can have, there are a few ways to color this grid such that you only use two colors and uh, you can think about how it would alternate, right? And we don't wanna include those. Um, they are included in this number here, but we need to remove them from the count because they don't meet this condition of using every color at least once, yeah? So here's the way that I went about thinking about it. Um, again, just like with part one, I thought a diagram would help me. I wanna know how many of these two color designs need to be removed. 
well, what does a two color design look like? And hopefully without reasoning too far, you can see it's gonna be some version of this, right? Um, even if it's not this, these exact colors, if you chose green and blue, um, once you've got those two there, um, you have to use, if I'm limiting myself to a two color design, you have to use green and blue again, but you just flip them upside down so that adjacent colors aren't beside, aren't equal to each other, right? And then you flip it again, and then you flip it again, and then you flip it again. If you've only got two colors to play with, you've got no more choices, right? So in fact, what I'm trying to say is that once you've chosen the colors of your first column, the other columns have already kind of been determined for you. So really, to work out the number of two color designs, I really just need to know what's the number of ways to choose the first column's colors. Once you've chosen the first column's colors, if you limit yourself to that, you'll cover every single possible two color design, okay? So did you, did you follow that? Um, so I'm now gonna try and work out how many there are to remove. So there are, uh, well, I've got three colors to choose from, right? So it's that X times X minus one. So that's three times two um, ways to color the first column. And that means that there are three times two ways to use only two colors. I don't know why I put such a big space there. Um, there are three times two ways to color everything using the colors of the first column, okay? So therefore, there are, oops, easy. there are six total ways or six total two color designs. And these are the ones which I'm not allowed to have, right? Because I'm supposed to have designs that use all of the colors all together. So I just take my big number, the 486 that I calculated right here, and then I just remove these guys and everything that's left will need to use three colors. So I'm going to say, um, in conclusion, um, number of ways with all colors is going to be equal to that 486, take away the six that I just calculated. So that gives you this number right here. Full stop. Well, did it run the time, and yes, good job, Varen. You put your money where your mouth was, and um, it's saved on the recording for all posterity, okay? So, so congratulations. Was this a hard question? Well, when you take stock of looking at like the complexity of um, the numbers here, Absolutely not, but I think in many ways that you, people got intimidated by this question or they felt like they just didn't have enough time to think through what was going on and so they didn't even get to the point of trying to actually put pen to paper and work out what was happening. So classic example of where the logic and the thought is the important part and then how to communicate that once you've got it. Um, hopefully the way that I've set up my proof is pretty um, convincing and self-explanatory. Okay, 